So today we are going to look at uh, Hughes's <coughs> contribution to same alpha. Okay. Okay, so there uh, there are two effects. Okay, one is purely because of the fuse dodge, and there's another effect which is the uh, wing fuse dodge interaction, right? So flow over the fuse dodge is going to get affected by the wing. Right? Similarly, fuse dodge is also going to contribute to uh, wing contribution to piece stability, right? So, as you know, this uh, like most of this course is going to uh, depend upon the data, you know, data coming from the uh, wind tunnel or you know, based on some uh, empirical relation, right? Uh, this one is particularly difficult. We just have some estimates provided by people at different uh, stages. So there is one person called uh, Max Mung who was the first person to study the effect of you know, fuselage on pitch stability and he gave a formula in 1923 for slender okay so he based on his experimental uh, observations he uh, gave an empirical relation And this is per degree, right? So M is the pitching moment here, and Q is the dynamic pressure. Later on, he also added another factor to this. Now this factor was to account for the slenderness ratio okay so what is also called the fineness ratio and if you want to look at how it or this parameter varies with the slenderness ratio this is not lift over drag this is length over diameter okay varies something like this okay. for non circular section this is uh, for uh, uh, a body which is body of revolution okay so you can right
I think you can extend this formula further to Now this is like a volume, right? So width of the fuselage at any particular section, no, into dx. That this gives you so it's like a squarish section, right? Into the uh, into a length, elemental length along the length of the fuselage, right? And you have to integrate this so that. This becomes the volume. Yeah, they are different. Okay, so uh, you have to remember that uh, all of these relations are based on experimental observations. So this is the corrected version of this one. Okay. So I would say. you want to talk about bodies which are not may not be symmetric you know this is how you have to find out the volume so wf can be a width you know at any section and you multiply it by this delta x wf is the width of any section okay so you can so this looks like a cross sectional area right into the length element dx so it's like uh, taking it as square it yeah okay uh, can you take it as how it is because this again I'm I'm repeating it it's an empirical formula right so this person gave it right if you want to know further you have to uh, uh, that may have been taken into account in this okay but uh, what he did not uh, account for was the local flow disturbance okay so flow will be disturbed ahead of the wing and the behind the and behind the wing right because of right behind the wing there will be a downwash created right and in front of the wing upwash So this portion of the fuselage, the flow that is going to see is going to be different from what this portion is going to see, right? And uh, there is this portion who gave an empirical relation accounting for this effect coming from the wing right so wing is the one which is going to disturb the flow around the fuselage and that effect was taken into account by Moltov and the relation that he gave is something like this So remember we are only trying to get an estimate because we are still at the design stage right only after we have uh, gotten an estimate 
that we can build one small prototype and put it in the wind tunnel and then after that you know, compute all the derivatives same alpha is also be uh, measured in the wind tunnel after you have done the initial design right and then you are going to see whether it is matching with what you started with or not isn't it. So this is uh, still at the initial design stage. Yeah, I'll tell you. <coughs> so beta is the uh, local angle of attack. Which is alpha of the fuse large reference line, and we are writing it as alpha, right? Plus alpha i, which is like a, my effect coming from the wing, okay. So, clearly, in front of the wing is one. This derivative is one plus d epsilon over d alpha, right? And behind a rough estimate, okay. So for fuse large portion. ahead of the wing right if you remember we showed that the maximum upwards is going to be around this area right? and then it is slowly going to taper off right. So we look at looked at this picture where we saw this component of velocity like this right this was a wash front of the wing behind the wing the down wash is going to be maximum near the wing trailing edge and then it is going to slowly right diminish okay. So we have to be particularly careful about sections of the fuselage which are close to the wing right and thereby the, the, the empirical relation again there is a curve which tells you how this is going to change when you move along the length on the fuselage away from the wing. So if you are close to the wing then this effect is going to be more right and if you are away it is going to be less. Okay. So you can actually divide the fuselage in different sections right and use where s is the uh, the box counting okay so you have this section now and depends on how many bo uh, such boxes you have taken along the length of the fuselage. Okay. Now this is going to be different for each section. You have to remember that. Okay, and for that, the relation, the empirical relation is given. So you can 
uh, choose from a plot at what section you are how much away from the wing trailing edge or how much in front of the leading edge right. So, depending on that you can found this you can find this from an empirical curve which is given to you okay and calculate what this derivative is. Okay, so, this was the effect of the wing on the fuselage pitch stability right. Now fuselage is also changing the local flow around the wing right. So it is also going to change the pitching moment which is created because of the wing is not it. So the interaction is both ways wing is affecting the fuselage, fuselage is affecting the wing and uh, that uh, effect can be estimated it can be a bad estimate okay but you need such estimates because such as uh, estimates are going to be uh, useful in uh, determining the stability or the equilibrium of your initial uh, paper aircraft right you are starting with some design and you want to find out all the parameter parameters which are going to affect the equilibrium conditions and the stability. Okay, so this is this effect is given by this formula. All of these are estimations. Okay, you have to remember that. The correct value can be found only when you have put your prototype in the wind tunnel and measured the data accurately, right? Otherwise, you have to trust these estimates. So width of the fuselage at the wing leading edge, leading leading edge location. Okay, width of the fuselage at wing mid chord location, and this is the width of the fuselage at the wing trailing edge location. So now from this you can also find out what is DCM over DCL that is what we are doing in all the cases. Now since this is for a body of revolution it applies to both fuselage and the engine nacelle.
right if you want a ready formula with less accuracy then you can use this So LF here is the fuselage length, overall length, and WF is the maximum width of the fuselage. Now KF is an So there is a curve which gives a relation between KF and position of quarter of root chord okay so uh, at this called okay take this uh, quarter of that I'm writing body here because this form, this is applicable to both fuselage and engine nacelle, right? So now engine nacelle can also be located close to the wing, and we can determine where it's located with respect with respect to the uh, engine nacelle. Okay, it varies something like this. So I'm not going to I'm going to give you a correct. Uh, picture you can find this picture in many textbooks on this subject okay so this was 1941 there is one more uh, uh, person who worked on this problem and he gave another estimate okay the person name is Hogg and he gave this formula in 1960s okay and this you can uh, find in the book by uh, Philip W H Philip okay I think he is the only um, that this book is the only book which is giving a different formula okay all other books you will find uh, these two relations so let's look at this and this applies to both fuse large and Indian nacelle. Okay.
he calls this length as the chord length of the fuselage. the distance between the cg and the center of pressure of the fuselage is lf So there will be an area which will be if you are standing here and looking at this fuselage the area that uh, maximum area that you see is this SF okay and that is at some location which I have marked here and this axis is the minimum drag axis of the fuselage is different from the fuselage reference line okay because that is no any line which is different from the fuselage reference line is going to add to the angle of attack that the fuselage is going to see right so this axis is different from the huge large reference line if this line is same as the huge large reference line then there is no no extra angle of attack uh, to be accounted for now he gives uh, this no, pitching moment coefficient in terms of these parameters and this is about the cg right which is understood so look at this you are taking the reference which is for the fuselage and not for the wing so finally when you are going to add this contribution to the airplane pitch stability then you have to divide everything by the reference area of the wing isn't it that we have been taking the reference area as the reference area of the wing this is if you assume this sf to be a circle then the associated diameter is what this df is right so how do you get that sf is this right so equivalent diameter is df 
for this area as a So this alpha f is also the angle of attack with respect to this minimum drag axis of the fuselage right if I want to now find out what this alpha is with respect to the fuselage reference line that is going to be different. A center of pressure of the fuselage in this formula can be assumed assumed to be This location of this CP you can take it as halfway between the nose and the point of max right so somewhere uh, around this point. Okay. So Now this is the contribution to the airplane pitching moment coefficient right so you have to now divide it by the reference area of the wing right so we have to take the wing as the reference and then we can write And here is delta CM, right? We are talking about contribution from different components. So this is the contribution to the total airplane pitch stability from the fuselage. C bar is the mean aerodynamic chord of the wing. So this same relation actually gives you uh, formula for this and this also so you can write to what is delta cm not right cm not contribution to the whole airplane coming from the fuselage
this alpha naught f is the angle between the fuselage reference line and the minimum drag axis of the fuselage okay so if they are, they are overlapping then you can say that uh, this is zero okay <laughs> So what do you think this contribution is stabilizing or destabilizing? It will depend upon DF. So usually this contribution is destabilizing. Okay, LF is negative so let me just write the statement here lf is Okay, so this effect is usually contribution is usually destabilizing and what is what kind of effect that is going to have on the neutral point location or the static margin it will reduce the static margin right. So this has to be you know, taken into account it is not a small destabilizing effect okay so this effect should be taken into account and has to be estimated while you are designing your airplane. Okay. The next uh, component no we have one more component left right what is that the engine plant right so that this comes broadly under this topic which is called power effects right and engine plants can be of different types depending upon no, what altitude you are going to fly right what speeds you want 
so depending on all that you have different kind of engine plants and they will have their own dynamics for example if you are talking about turbo prop engine rep then the rotation of the propeller blades is going to affect the flow field behind it right and that is going to have an indirect effect on this cm alpha let's first look at the turbo prop engine and see what kind of effect it can have on so this i'll call thrust line okay location of cg is here which is at a height from this thrust line okay so h is the height of the cg above the thrust line right and distance of the propeller disc when the propellers are rotating no they are in motion you look from the front it will look to you like a disc right so when the when this uh, propeller is rotating then you have a force in that direction which is in the plane of the propeller disc np and so this is your remote wind direction and if it is located in the front of the wing is is also going to see a wash yeah np is the normal force on the propellers right and it will in the in the plane of the propeller disc yeah yeah no the the blades of the propeller is having an aerodynamic shape right so it there is going to be a force which is acting along the no along the blade length there will be some some unbalanced forces right yeah you can uh, yeah think like that for different uh, configurations right so that is like uh, uh, trying to diminish the effect of this right but let's look at uh, uh, what happens if we have this kind of configuration so we have one uh, aircraft uh, which is cessna in kanpur where you will see that uh, when they are trying to you know before they uh, take the airplane for actual flight they will be testing every thing right they will try to see if all the actuators are working fine engine is working fine right so they will uh, start uh, the engine and make the propellers run so you will see that uh, when the no airplane is kind of not flying okay so it's just standing and the wheels are locked so you put some blocks to the wheels and then you start running the propellers you will see that the aircraft will have a tendency to do this right and that's that is coming because of this so there will be a moment created when you uh, run the engine 
where is that force coming from when the airplane is not flying right that is that is coming from the propeller so you will see this when you go to Kanpur next year you will see this okay so I said uh, this these propellers are located in front of the wing so there is going to be an approach so this is your remote wind and because of the approach which is this angle epsilon this vector is tilted right and this is the angle of attack that the propeller is going to see of course this is very complicated because blade geometry itself is complicated so if you want to talk about what each section of the blade what angle of attack is going to see that is going to be something different it is a very complicated thing okay. So everybody gets what uh, propeller disc is understand when you are looking uh, at uh, these blades rotating at high speed when you do not see these blades individually but you see a disc right that is what is propeller disc okay so we can stop here and uh, we will continue from here in the next class.